Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My topic is the MR appearance of numerous spheres of Eccles and Bastet ganglion. Let me start my presentation from introduction. Spheral cervical sympathetic ganglion is the most cranial part of the cervical sympathetic chain. It serves as a neural circuit to distribute the sympathetic fiber to the head and neck regions. Its pathology is result in Honor syndrome. In previous report, its class current and location is ventral to the transverse process of the cervical vertebra embedded in the connective tissue between the acquired tissues and the long scapitus muscle, SC2 or C3 vertebra. In the clinical aspect, it is important to know the number of not may not to injure them during the anterior approach during cervical spine surgery and the cervical spastic block for the patient with intractable facial pain. In radiology aspect, there was a case report of an enlarged cervical spastic ganglion after therapeutic radiation, which was misdiagnosed as a metastatic lymphadenopathy at the time of diagnosis. So it could be a potential mimicker of a retropharyngeal lymph node, especially in patients with head and neck cancer after surface irradiation. However, its morphology and imaging appearance has never been reported yet, so we performed this study to assess imaging anatomy of numerous spheres of cervical ganglion on 3T MR using predefined anatomical criteria and to evaluate MR imaging feature to differentiate them from pathologies such as arteropharyngeal lymphadenopathy. This is the slide of patient population. From January 2013 to June 2013, 119 patients underwent neck MR and 66 patients were excluded for previous neck irradiation and 53 patients were finally included in this study. We localized the superior cervical spastic ganglion using anatomical criteria based on previous cardiac studies. It was vertically oriented fish form or a void shaped structure located medial to the internal carotid artery and lateral to the longus cavitus muscle at the level of C2 or C3 vertebra with mean size of 30 mm long and 8.1 mm wide. The best center reference is via histological relation. However, performing a biopsy might result in complications like Honor syndrome. So we try to overcome this matter with the following study design. Step 1. Two radiologists perform a consensus reading to localize the next site using predefined anatomical criteria and to exclude the next site with nearby electrophoranger or a prevertebral region. The localized the next site fulfilling all four criteria were grouped as a definite SCSG and we analyzed MR signal intensity of this group. Among the remaining next sites fulfilling all four criteria except their relative location to the ICA and the longus capitis muscle were grouped as a probable SCSG. Step two, the two radiologists independently reported the MR signal intensity and their relative location to the ICA and longus cavitus muscle. It was further divided as follows. One of the readers performed the same analysis with two week interval to investigate intra-observer agreement. Step 3, for all localized next sites, one reader measured the three-dimensional size and determined the level of the ganglia relative to the level of cervical spine. This is contrasting as the fat-saturated T1 axial images obtained at the level of C2 and 3 intervertebral disc. To describe their relative location to the ICA and longus capitis muscle, we used a parallel line to the long axis of the ganglia and the two vertical line at lateral and the medial margin of the ICA. Another parallel line and one vertical line at lateral one-third of the longus capitis muscle. 
The typical location is medial to the ICA and lateral to the longus muscle. So possible anatomic variations are anterior, lateral, posterior to the ICA and anterior to the longus capitis muscle. Among 106 neck sites in 53 patients, we localized 91 neck sites after excluding 15 neck sites. For all localized neck sites, we analyzed MR signal intensity. During consensus reading, the intraganglion linear hypointensity was frequently observed and further defined as intraganglionic hypointense line located along the longitudinal axis of the ganglia continuous at least two or more contiguous axial images. The presence of intraganglionic linear hypointensity was evaluated in both groups and the relative location of the probable SCSG were evaluated. Among 91 localized the next site, 66 localized the next sites had a traditional location and all showed T2 high T1 intermediate signal intensity with marked contrast enhancement. Previously mentioned, intraganglion linear hypointensity was noted more than 90% in both groups using contrast enhanced fast saturated imaging. Regarding anatomic variation, Typical location was only observed in 73% and anatomic variations were anterior to the longus capitis muscle in 18%, lateral to the ICA in 7%, and posterior to the ICA in 3%. It showed excellent inter-observer and intra-observer agreement. Intraganglionic linear hypointensity was demonstrated in 90% of all ganglia and the best demonstrated on contrast-enhanced fast-saturated T1-weighted image followed by T2-weighted image with either good or excellent inter-observer agreement. The most frequent level of ganglia was C2 vertebra in 67% of the cases with three dimensional sizes are as follows. Representative cases of definite and probable SCSG. These MR images obtained from four different patients show its traditional location as medial to the ICA and lateral to the longus capitis muscle. Among probable SCSG, the most frequent anatomy location was anterior to the longus capitis muscle, followed by lateral and posterior to the ICA. In more than 90% of the ganglia, entire ganglion in linear hypointensity was nicely demonstrated and most conspicuous on contrast enhanced fast saturated imagery. Susceptibility weighted imaging showed intraganglion linear hypointensity as a marked hypo intense focus on magnitude imaging that became hyper-intense to the same degree as a venous structure on phage images such as paraportiva venous plexus. Histology examination of the harvested SDSG from an adult cadaver showed an SGSG with an axial diameter of 4.5 5 mm that was encapsulated by thick connective tissue and the central vascular structure with a diameter of 0.6 mm, which was confirmed as a venue on elastic stain. In conclusion, it was feasible to demonstrate normal spherical cervical sympathetic ganglion on 3T MRI with constant signal characteristics. Its traditional location was observed only in 73%. Intraganglion linear hypointensity, which was observed in 90% of the all next sites, could be a potential imaging feature which could differentiate them from retropharyngeal lymphadenopathy. Thank you.